Oh, hey, how's it going? Welcome to One Question, One Answer. We are in the middle of a lot of construction. As you can see, not done yet, but it's starting to look like we actually might know where things are going. We have some seating area here, we have some open area. So as we've been saying, as we've been shooting these, we want to give you a little taste of where Ikea is going, but we actually have some business to attend to, so let's go. Watch yourself there, Michael. Yeah, careful about that right there. <laughs> well, let's go check out today's panel for one question, one answer. They're ready to go. Morning, guys. Good morning. Hi. We just got a quick sneak peek of the new space. Michael almost ran into some, some something I don't know. It could have been a really sharp tool for all I know. <laughs> Um, it's called a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hammer, Ben. I think my favorite part was when Amber said they were using chainsaws over here to do the construction. We're not using there chainsaws. There were some trees here. they had to clear. Yeah. So welcome to One Question, One Answer. It's been a while. Um, we had a, a little bit of a spring break there, um, but we wanted to jump back in. And I think we have a pretty good question today, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw it right out to our panel because I'm excited to hear. Um, you know, we're through the first quarter of the year. And now that the dust has started to settle a little on 2017, we're starting to see some things emerge, some trends emerge. Um, but I wanted to ask these guys, give us your take. What's the biggest thing right now in marketing that companies aren't taking advantage of? We've, we're a quarter through the year. What should they be paying attention to that they're not? And Ryan, why don't you start? Right. Um, I'd probably say in general, like that, that buzz term gets thrown out like big data. So what's basically happening is we're finding out is companies and clients and everyone that we work with, they have more access to information than they've ever had before. Yeah. So it's kind of like an info obesity problem where they just have all this data and they don't know what's important, they don't know what to do with it. And we're seeing it kind of trickle into a bunch of different industries. Like a big buzz, another buzzword that's being thrown around is industry 4.0. Yeah. Um, it's not just information that marketers have, it's information that manufacturers have. So now they have sensors on the machines and they know exactly what to do to have the most optimized line time and the most optimized you know, production time. So I think the thing that we need to pay attention to is what all of this data means, how we can look and work to analyze it and, and make our clients most efficient uh, when utilizing it. Because I think the big problem that I continue to see when working with people is like, I have all this information and I'm not sure what to do with it. So just finding a way to, you know, what's important, what outline, you know, what's lines up with your business objectives, and then we'll find out what's important and use that data correctly. So And learning to trust the numbers. Yes. Numbers, data, don't lie. They're not, it's not trying to convince you of yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. It's there to help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, that's right. Jason, what's, what do you think? Um, I'm going to go with more just kind of traditional account planning. Um, I think right now people are a lot more kind of reactive instead of being proactive. Yeah. So they don't kind of put like a plan together. They kind of just have like knee-jerk reactions to things. That is great. And I think um, like the Pepsi commercial that just came out with Kendall Jenner? Yeah. I don't, I don't know that one. I'm, I'm in my oh. 30s. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a 30-something kid. <laughs> um, but I had watched that last night and I got to kind of see like the Twitter storm that came from it. Yeah. And it was uh, then I think released I don't know if this is just Pepsi trying to like save their agency, but they said that it was all done internally and that was like Pepsi's idea. So it wasn't an agency's fault, it was Pepsi's brainchild. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, kind of the outcry yeah. of it, I mean, people were making jokes about like, well, if, you know, um, you know, they had given someone at Tiananmen Square a Pepsi, no, none of that would have happened. Like people were like, that was the kind of leap yeah. that Pepsi was making with this commercial. Yeah. And so I, I, to me, that seemed like it was something like, well, there's, this huge movement going on right now. So we're gonna kind of capitalize on it. We're not gonna really think it through and think, will there be any kind of reaction to it? It's just, this is current, this is now, so let's do something that relates to it. Yeah. So I don't think there's enough kind of planning in the, in the beginnings, the, the stage and say, okay, well, like, what are the reactions gonna be? It's just, let's kind of give a reaction because we know it's gonna create some kind of response. Right. So I think just going back to just tried and true, account planning, coming up with these plans, making long-term campaigns that have life to them starting in quarter one and working all the way to quarter four. That's stuff that I think isn't being done as much anymore, and I kind of would like to see more of it. Yeah, we're a long way from Cindy Crawford and Ray Charles. Yeah. In Clear Pepsi. <laughs> you know, the world would be a better place if we could just start bringing back Clear Pepsi. <laughs> Amy, last but not least. Um, I was looking at this more kind of an in, from an internal standpoint in organizational communications um, and marketing. Um, just because right now I feel like there's so much content. Everyone, you know, content's a big thing, content marketing. 
um, but a lot of that content's going externally, yeah. you know, and they don't really look at, we have so many assets internally, you know, in our company, um, whether you're selling something or, you know, service or product. Um, and so I would like to see people utilize more of the organization to be able to, you know, get that message out, sure. using their employees as brand ambassadors. Um, employees know more about the company than anybody, yeah. um, and they're, they're great people to, you know, talk to somebody, even whether it's employees or customers, um, talking through the benefits of a company or a service or, you know, telling the story of the company. So many companies have really good stories about their history and stuff. And, and it's just, it's kind of ignored because of thinking, you know, where, where are we going in the future? Uh, what's the next step? And it's like, you know, that's great to look at, but like, where, where did they come from? You know, and um, one spot, I know I think I've shared with some people and everyone's seen is that um, Jack Daniels spot from Lynchburg, yeah, Tennessee. And yeah. I love that spot. Oh, yeah, and it's just telling about the people who are, you know, making whiskey. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's just really, um, it's, it's just a really good spot. It makes you feel good about the company. Um, you know, they don't need to tell who Jack Daniels is. I mean, you, you know the brand, you know the name. Right. Um, but to, to hear about a little bit more about the people behind it. I, you know, I, I love those kind of stories. And I feel like um, they're, they're out there. It's just finding them. You know, it's, it's pulling those brand ambassadors internally and finding who those people are. Yeah, that's great. And it, these are great examples, and I think um, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them right there. I'm gonna to, to tack onto that because the reality is, you know, learning to trust those things that have will pay off in the long run and put in place. Whether it's data, actual planning, or your employees, they're there right in front of you to take to take full advantage of when it comes to utilizing them. And there, in, in all three instances, they can be used to drive the business and the marketing plan. So great examples, great answers. Um, glad to be back. Uh, who knows what we'll see next time, but uh, until next time, thanks a lot, thanks for watching.